You're listening to Behind the Scenes Podcast Diary, episode number 16. Welcome to Amelia's Behind the Scenes Podcast Diary, an exclusive look at the behind the scenes misadventures of a 30 something thriller writer. Discover how close she is to releasing her latest novel, hear exciting details about upcoming writing projects, and discover the lessons she has learned along her writing journey so you don't have to make the same mistakes. You can find the episode show notes and lots more information at ameliahay.com forward slash podcast forward slash BTS. So I started filming weekly writing vlogs on my YouTube channel after remembering this had helped me with productivity and making time for revisions. But classic me, I came to the realization that I always come to when I do this. It's like I'm a super slow learner. Video editing is time consuming. It's like pulling teeth, which is why I decided to turn this behind the scenes podcast diary into a chatty weekly update. Let's face it, if I can do this on video, I can do it on a podcast. This means I'll be sharing what's going on behind the scenes as I publish my three thriller novels. And obviously I'll be continuing this long after those three books are published. So the idea behind this is I want it to be chat over a cup of tea between friends. I want it to be casual but informative if that makes sense. So you're going to get an honest inside scoop. As I record this update I'm drinking a cup of Fleur d'Orange tea from La Durée. It tastes as beautiful as it sounds but tragically you can only get it from this tiny shop near the Louvre. So now you know why I take so many trips to Paris. But don't panic you're not going to hear me slow lurping away at my tea. I promise to always hit the mute button. The reason I'm sharing this is I've heard people do that on podcasts, videos and webinars. All of In all of these instances as a presenter or host you have the option of hitting the mute button even if it's live. So there's, there's really no excuse for this slurping going on and you can edit it out too. It's so super gross. So please use your mute button fellow podcasters. Well obviously my mute button and I are best friends. Enough of my ranting and let's get on with the show. Here's a fun fact. I was originally going to call this podcast diary Caffeine Read, Write, Repeat, but I didn't do that because I thought it's not really SEO friendly. And now that I've started talking about what I'm drinking or the tea that I'm drinking as I'm recording the podcast, that there's, I feel tempted to bring it full circle to start talking about the books that I read. Because as a writer, I don't read in one particular genre. I will literally read anything. As in, if the pages turn, I'll give it a go. So I'm not very selective. Well, I like good books and I think when you talk about good books good is it's open to interpretation so essentially what that what that podcast was going to be as you can sort of tell by the spoilery name I was going to talk about tea what I'm reading and behind the scenes of my author journey so what I'm writing and because I interpret the word write as in the entire process of writing a book including what happens after because there's no point writing something if no one else reads it so I guess if you love this podcast episode and think I should turn this into more of a caffeine read write repeat thing then let me know in the comment section over on the blog at ameliahay.com forward slash bts016 obviously that means I have to record a new intro that's okay so what I'm reading this week is The Visitor by Lee Child I sort of have a love-hate relationship with Jack Reacher I don't always appreciate him and I sort of saw the cover on this and I thought, oh, that's interesting. So it was set in New York. Because Immunity is set in New York at the moment, I like to read a lot of things that involve journalism and New York. And so the cover sucked me in because I think it's a view of Brooklyn Bridge, possibly. So I was like, oh, I want to read that. So downloaded it, started reading. I absolutely love it. And it's in third person. So I was so excited about how my love for this particular book. And I'm actually 50% of the way through now. So I shared it on Instagram. And the only response I got to the image was this other writer saying oh I preferred The Killing Floor. I really hated this book and I was like "Ooh, I kind of hated The Killing Floor. Maybe hate's a strong word. I really didn't like The Killing Floor. I think because it was in first person I think what was this orange cover? I'm pretty sure it's The Killing Floor and it really is like a western and my I remember as a kid my grandfather bless his soul tortured me 
with John Wayne movies. He is a John Wayne. He's got a John Wayne addiction and he loves those old movies. And I remember being seven and having to watch these movies and I absolutely hate them. There, I'm throwing that word out again. I really don't like them. So I read this and I thought, I so I read The Killing Floor and I was like, oh, I don't like that. And I couldn't work out why. And then I saw an interview with Lee Child where he I think he mentioned that it was kind of like a Western, a modern Western. And I was like, oh, that's why I don't like this. So yeah, my grandfather would love this particular series. But anyway, I love, it's called The Visitor by Lee Child and it's in this purpley cover. And in the book, you do see him struggle with his need to just wander around and be free and just go from town to town. And the concept of staying in the one place because he's got a house somewhere. I can't remember. I think he's got a girlfriend in this and he's sort of struggling. And I'm sort of getting the, the feeling that it's not going to, the relationship is going to end well because it doesn't serve the story, the overall story arc, or the premise of the Jack Reacher series where he just goes from town to town. So I probably won't like every book and that's okay. I'll actually share a picture of the cover in the show notes over on the blog at ameliahay.com forward slash BTS 016 purely for, because the cover is it's so beautiful and if you do write in the sort of thriller genre, thriller mystery suspense genre, you might want to check out this cover just to get a bit of inspiration just so you know, this is what readers are expecting. I'm actually super excited to share this next part with you purely because I feel like I've really been procrastinating and working on this book for so long and I'm finally finished the plot related revisions on Wednesday and I've just let the book sit for a couple of days. What I mean by plot related revisions is I read through the story and I, I focused on the major moments and getting all of them right. At the same time I was also focusing on I was focusing on a few other things. I think it was character thought and setting at the same time as I was doing these plot related revisions because I was noticing these things. So I just kind of figured I may as well change this now. Part of the reason why I wanted to change the character thought is I changed how I showed the character thought and the new way seems to flow effortlessly with the story. So on Wednesday I added three new scenes at the end of the novella. So what happened was I noticed that the last three scenes just weren't cutting it. One was perfect. And then the last scene I realized that it wasn't possible, that this doesn't quite happen in the UK. It would, this particular scenario would happen in the United States, but it's not realistic because I have established a certain level of realism in the novel. I ended up doing a bit of research and I came up with a new ending and this new ending was broken up into two scenes. So these three new scenes resulted in me adding an extra 1,822 words to the revised draft. So the new word count is about, I think it's 38,337 words. So it's a super long novella. So my next round of revisions, I'm focusing on character arcs, motivations and inconsistencies with character thought. Because I added those extra scenes, I actually added quite a few extra scenes. I deleted scenes and I added new ones. Well, I rewrote scenes and added a few new ones. So there was four new scenes and I think Seven needed some type of rewrite. I kept the dialogue and I rewrote everything else around it. This week I've been doing an experiment with changing the time I write because I'm writing a blog post about the best time of day to write a novel or in my case revise. And it's going well with the exception today. I had to put this as a priority over my writing. And by the way, this is not how I intended on writing this, this particular blog post. I was just going to talk about the best times to write. And I realized I really wanted it to be about you can write any time of day. And I read research that said, you know, in the morning, it wasn't necessarily 5 a.m. in the morning. It was just in the morning. So I kind of figured, is this actually true? 
So I'm doing an experiment. Now that I've mentioned this, I'm considering recording of the blog post as a bonus episode for the podcast and release it in April. So I'll keep you posted once I make a decision. So while we're on the topic of me making a decision, I, I was kind of on the fence about getting some developmental editing purely because of the cost. It is quite expensive. There's no way of sort of dressing that up. And the more money you spend putting out a product, the obviously the more money you make and the more pressure it is to, to, to break even. So I've decided that I'm going to pay for a professional beta read, a line edit, and then a final proofread. So I've contacted a copy editor and a proofreader. And funnily enough, I'm starting to become really insecure about my writing now that she's responded back and she said that she has time and she wants to see my manuscript and now I'm like what if it's a pile of crap what if my writings what if I'm secretly the worst writer out there and I'm just about to find out like that type of stuff like I've em I've sent messages to my husband over the course of the last few days going are you sure my book isn't really crap and I'm like super insecure and he's probably the worst person to ask because he's got a certain type of investment in in me being successful so he's more likely to encourage me but I'm just feeling super insecure I went from feeling you know I really like this story not thinking that I was Pulitzer Prize winning in any way I just thought I really like it to oh my god I'm so I suck I'm the worst writer that's ever walked the face of the earth so that's always interesting so yes so I feel like I've got many layers of insecurity now about my writing I went from being in this little bubble and feeling secure about my writing to yeah feeling like a complete failure so I've actually made a decision about how I want to re release my three stories so I want to rapid release missing silence and immunity with four weeks between releases towards the end of the year. Before I started contacting editors, I did have a certain level of insecurity about my story. At one time, it was mainly about the realism in my stories. I was really obsessed with that. And all three of them, actually, have been quite obsessed. So my insecurity around my writing and the level of realism could have resulted in my obsession over revising missing. I've created this overcomplicated stage process and checklist. Now that I've listen to what other writers do say about revisions it's a little different to my style of revision and I mean not too many people go into extravagant detail about what they do like I kind of have done and the impression I'm getting is other people just do a single pass then do like their own line edit and then push it off to an editor and I'm wondering if I just need to stop obsessing over it put on my big girl pants and just submit it to an editor like be an adult so in light of revision my revision checklist is ever growing there always seems to be something to add so in light of this I have set a deadline for the 20th of April and I've also told this copy editor so in response to the email I was she replied back I need Need to format what I've written I told her this is the third book that I've written that I was unpublished and told her the word count and I told her I was halfway through revision so I was pretty clear just I wanted to give I wanted her to realize what she was working with if you know what I mean I wanted to be a little bit transparent about it so she got back to me and she asked for the whole thing and that's fine because I can see why like when you submit the first chapter I've really obsessed over my first few chapters and when you submit a first few chapters to an editor I don't think it's a good example of the quality of the writing I think an editor really does need to see the entire thing to get a good glimpse of how much it's going to cost to do the copy and proofread so I need to see honor that motive honor that deadline use that as a motivation and format what I've currently written or the state of my current revised draft and send it to her. As I'm revising Missing, I'm also editing a second edition of Smart Goal Setting. And I'm super excited to announce that I've reached the end of part three of a five part book. Part four and five are actually a lot smaller than part three. Um, the reason why I broke up into parts, I broke up into five big steps and then I've and then each chapter within those parts are the smaller steps you need to take to get the result promised by 
inside the book. I've reached the end of part three and I'm really excited about that because I feel like I've been working on this for a long time and I want to create something that's actually useful and will help the reader reach the end of the book if they take the actionable steps. So in light of that, I'm considering adding an actionable steps section at the end of each chapter after the recommended resources and worksheets section, kind of like Chris Fox does with his writing books. I've realized that's actually super helpful. You don't have to go through the chapter again and figure out what am I supposed to do now because it's there in black and white. And I also think that would be helpful if you had the audiobook version and you could just listen on, pause, write down the steps and move on or take action then move on to the next chapter. I've also found an editor for the second edition but I'm a little nervous about using them because it's a different editor to the fiction editor. So I've been contacting a lot of editors this week. The reason why I'm nervous is the fiction editor was kind of an, a recommendation from someone who I trust. I trust their sense of judgment mainly because I've been listening to their podcast for quite some time now and I know they're a little bit no nonsense so they wouldn't put up with you know someone who wasn't up to par. I guess you could say. So I'm not saying that this editor isn't up to par. It's just I sent them an email because I was by their website. I was, they didn't have a frequently asked questions section and I wasn't quite sure if they did nonfiction. So I sent them an email and I said I couldn't find your frequently asked questions section. So I thought I'd just drop, drop you an email, email and ask you if you did like line and proof, line editing and proofreading for a short nonfiction book. And she replied back and because I said all of that in the email, I had to read read the email a couple of times to be a hundred percent sure that her answer was actually what I was interpreting at. So at first I thought she said no but I realized she was saying no there was no frequently asked questions section and yes they do edit nonfiction, but she didn't quite say it like that so it was the answer was a little bit confusing and because I've had that experience I'm thinking is this the best editor for me I'm not sure if it's purely because of that or I'm just insecure about this book because I think it's crap just like my fiction like I'm really going through this phase of you know just insecurity so if you're like this I've written three four books now and I still think my writing's terrible so if you I now think my writing's terrible but it's a new type of it's a new level of insecurity when I wrote immunity I literally I thought and I finished and I thought what if my story's crap what if I think it's great and no one actually likes it and then when I wrote silence I really loved writing that and I started questioning my ability to write great prose and I was really struggling with that with missing I really struggled with the level of real would this really happen and it's a bit mental because I'm writing fiction so it implies that it's not real because it's not sitting on the non-fiction section so it's such a weird thing to be obsessing about but with the first edition of Smarter Goal Setting I loved it I was a bit naive and I published it and I thought it was great and now that I've you know four books later I'm looking back at that my first book and thinking this is a pile of crap maybe it is a bit but it's probably not as bad as what I'm thinking so if you're writing your first book and you're having that I like my story Story, but what if no one else likes that story type of insecurity or whatever insecurity that you're struggling with and you're thinking obviously this is going to get better as, as I write more it doesn't actually it kind of gets worse well it has gotten for me but it's a different type of insecurity but over time and also like I sort of alluded to earlier I am looking at this first book on the back of re revising my third thriller which is my fourth book so I've grown a lot as a writer between in amongst all of this journey and I'm so I'm looking I'm almost being a little bit unfair which is why the insecurity has changed and has gotten worse because if a coaching client came to me with their first book I would never look at them so critically like the way I look at my own work because it's their first book and you make mistakes and that's how you learn and grow as a writer as a writer you are a little bit unfair on yourself sometimes but not all the time so I'm writing a new series I know that probably sounds a bit crazy but bear with me there's a perfectly logical reason for that so this new series features the supporting cast of Missing. The only person who exists in the James Lond universe who's actually in Missing 
Actually, there are a few people that are technically at this stage a part of the James Lon universe that will leave after Missing has wrapped up. So when you get to Silence, there's none of these people are actually in the book other than James. So in Silence, he's having a bit of a Jack Reacher moment. Other than the people that actually live in the town that he is currently in in Missing, James is the only person that's actually consistently in the series at this stage. By the time we get to Immunity, there's more of a permanent cast. Missing and Anxiance are really prequel stories. They're more of a mini prequel series on their own. There are people who are in there. There's like three individuals who are part of the supporting cast that are actually a part of a different series. So the events of book one of this new series will happen before Missing. So now I have, so I do have a few restrictions. As a creative, I'm starting to realize that restrictions in writing aren't necessarily a terrible thing. I think it forces me to be more creative with the parameters I have to work with. Part of the reason why I'm avoiding saying the title of the first book is it's super spoilery for missing so if you don't want to read this new series you don't have to you can just read people can just read the James Lond series and this is perfectly fine but so this new series is really an archaeological thriller series or an action adventure thriller series so I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to pitch this to readers. I've decided that it will feature a male protagonist instead of the female one that I originally had imagined because I imagined really enjoying writing the book as her as the protagonist and something happened through the course of the book I got to know her a little bit better and I don't actually enjoy writing her it's not because she's female it's just towards the end I just I don't know I just don't enjoy writing her as I'm as much as I enjoy writing this other male character mainly because he does super questionable things for very understandable reasons he's almost an anti-hero and he's complicated and I think this is what I like she's not as complicated as he is I think she's more she is in her own way but I think this character he's more of an anti-hero and he, obviously as I've alluded to he he blurs the, the line between what's right and wrong. I also figured out who the bad guy is in this series. I've been I've been wanting to have a different bad guy, a different villain, but realistically there's only one option and I've been avoiding it but I've decided to roll with it because it is it's something that's promised. I'm not going to explain why I've come to this decision because I, I don't want to spoil too much of my books. I feel like I may have spoken too much about my James Lon series but that's because I just love it so much. So my plan is to write one James Lond thriller, then an archaeological thriller and rotate the release. That's after the release of Missing, Silence and Immunity. And obviously this book one. I think I need to release book one and Missing around the same time because their worlds have merged and it makes more sense. The reason why I chose to start this new series is because I was hoping this would prevent any boredom I may get from sticking to the same series. Obviously because I'm a writer, I'm fairly creative, but I'm a great starter of things and a bad finisher of things and I think it's because I get bored and I, th I think if I keep just writing Lee Child style not that I think I'm Lee Child in any way shape or form but if I keep just writing the same character I know I'm going to get bored and I'm not going to want to finish the series so I think if I have this other thing and I change between these two series I think it'll be enough for me to be interested and to keep going longer term as a writer. And also this archaeological thriller series, I can end it after say book five and just have a five book series because the books aren't, there's no overarching storyline. There is a bit of an overarching storyline with the James Lon series, but you can read them individually and it will still make sense. Whereas these archaeological thriller series are purely standalone, but they do follow a logical timeline. In the spirit of accountability, I thought I would share with you what I need to get done next week. So I need to read through missing, take notes on the character arcs, motivations, and make any revisions. The next thing I need to do next week is revise the next three chapters of Smarter Goal Setting. I also need to write and edit the script for the next episode of the Authorpreneur podcast, which would be, which would be episode 27. I also need to record, edit, and schedule that podcast in my hosting platform, which is Blueberry. And I 
also need to write the notes for the next episode of the Behind the Seeds podcast, which will be 17 if I don't change the name of it to ca- Caffeine Read, Write, Repeat. And also need to record, edit and schedule that episode. The episode should be easier to do because I'm now scriptless. Like you'll notice the way I beak in this is a little bit, it's rushed and it's, I'm all over the place. Whereas in the in the authorpreneur podcast episodes i'm writing a more i'm super calm and it's almost like you can tell i'm reading the reason for that is i take that super seriously i want it to be evergreen content and i want to say things in a certain way i don't want to screw up and i know i have a few word hang-ups which i have to edit out and i want that to be perfect that's super unrealistic but that's why i do that five years from now i want people to go through that and get value from it i do a lot of heavy research for a reason and I want it to be like that whereas this particular part of the show I want it to be a chat over a cup of tea between friends me telling you what's going on what's worked what hasn't which is why I have these two separate shows I can't really merge them together because they're quite different Did you like this week's chatty behind the scenes podcast episode or do you prefer the diary to be more focused around a single topic with actionable steps? Let me know by coming over to the blog post at ameliahay.com forward slash bts016 and share your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for listening and happy reading and writing everybody. Thank you for listening to Amelia's Behind the Scenes Podcast Diary. If you love this episode, then hit the subscribe button and leave a review on your favorite podcasting app. I'm your host, Amelia, and I'll see you next week for another diary episode.